are going to um, bring the um, actor Julieta Zilberberg out on stage. She's a very accomplished actor in Argentina and has even appeared in August Osage County. She was the lady in the restaurant, the waitress. Will you please welcome Julieta Zilberberg? We give a golden thumb. Wow. And we are going to also bring the casting director out, Javier Brayer. He is the leading casting director in Argentina. <laughs> and you also get a golden thumb. And then we are going to have, by Skype, the director who thought of all these crazy wild tales, Damien Zifron, by Skype, but let's get started. We're gonna have you sit and we'll take care of these thumbs for you. And I'm gonna go back and make sure we can get Damien on the phone. Oh, and Michael Barker is coming out. I'm coming out. You may not Okay. No, you in the middle. Yeah. Okay. Wow. <laughs> First of all, uh, my youngest daughter is getting married next week and I'm totally terrified. <laughs> totally terrified. Um, don't, wow. don't be afraid. We're gonna be met by uh, Damien and he's gonna be 100 feet tall, which he deserves to be. What about the talent of this director and writer, Damien Ziffrin? Oh my God. And I don't know if you noticed, at the end of the film, when you know the film is, in, uh, is ending, the first credit is Javier, the casting director, because the casting is so key to this movie. Thank you. Thank you. Anyway, uh, why don't we just begin until we figure out how Damien's going to join us. Um, how, did, how did you become attached to the film? At what point? Um, well, first, I, I want to thank Jazz and the, all the festival, uh, that beautiful audience. Really, I, I'm very happy to be here. Thank you. Um, I was very happy when my phone rings and be, I don't remember, happy, I guess. <laughs> Uh, and he sent me the script uh, to do a character of one of the histories, and I read all, all the script, and I was on shock. <laughs> uh, really, I think... Did you get just the one story or all of the stories? All. I read all. <laughs> um, it's... Magnificent. I, I, um, I didn't uh, doubt a second even to, to, to do this. I, I really wanted to work with Damian and the, the, all the histories are incredible. Did you know him before? Uh, and, well, I, I, I knew him, uh, but uh, yes, socially. I, I, d yeah. I didn't work before that movie. You know, the cast is incredible, uh, Javier. You know, the, the fact of the matter is probably every major Argentinian actor of film is in this movie. By the way, it is the most successful Argentinian film in film history in Argentina. Yeah, that's uh, true. That's, I mean, like, you wait for a success is like one million people, for example, and this was four million people in the theater, so it was really, really crazy. And it still is, because every time you, you see it with an audience, everybody gets crazy, so it's crazy all the time. But it must have been such a pleasure to cast this movie. You had so many characters. Well, um, it is because, I mean, starting working with Damian, it's a big adventure, because you, you read the script, and you get crazy. You start, 
you would like to start immediately to, to do the job, you know, you have to do. But you know that with him and with that script, you can get anyone, anyone wants to be in. So it was, uh, I mean, like, uh, like a toy, you know, just do what you want with this because everybody wants to, to be in. Everybody start calling to know about the script, the agents and, so we have a lot of freedom to work with the greatest actor in Argentina. So it was, um, I, I can't remember, but weeks and weeks of working and trying to do like a puzzle, you know, because you had six stories, six, more than six leading actors. So you would, it was, I mean, amazing just to put, what if this is the leading of this, but what can this, actor do in another story, and then what happens if he's in the first one, if it's better to have that big other actor in the last one, you know? So it was like a big, big puzzle that it started with the leadings and then continued. It was probably it. somewhat easier than if it was one story because you're, you have all these major actors and you don't need them for many months. Like how many days in, or did Ricardo Darín do his section uh, of weeks? You know, that, that's a very good question because no matter what I said before, that everybody wants to be in and everybody really was keen on working with the man and with the script, then you have to figure it out how they can do it during these two months of shooting. So actually we started with Ricardo's story, Ricardo Darín, the one, the engineer, uh, Bombita. What's the, uh, in English? Bombita. Dynamite. It's dynamite, called dynamite, dynamite, you know? Yeah. Uh, we, I guess we shoot for eight days in a row. We only had him like for eight days, but of course, when we finished the eight days, there was still some more things to do because as you can see in the movie, Damien is very specific, very, you know, he goes after every detail. So <laughs> a lot of, uh, how do you say, uh, extra hours every day of shooting, you know? So we had to beg him to do one more day. And then when the movie was done, like, I don't know, after editing, but that happened in April. I remember in December shooting one or two more days of yeah. specific shots for that story. Mm. Like, uh, like uh, shortcuts, uh, you know, head shots of him. Uh, it's very specific things that Damian needed. So actually we shot it a couple of days more than eight. I guess it was like 10. I remember, ¿cómo se dice plano? Uh, shot. Uh, a shot uh, that I have the fried potatoes uh, in my hand. Uh, we did like 30 30 times. takes, <laughs> oh, 30 man. takes of that. Uh, with the hand more like this or more like this or... <laughs> <laughs> I, I but it's very that. good, this shot. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we have them. Okay. Um, we're going to, Damien's going to join us. I, I do want to say one thing about the film because uh, a, an omnibus film like this very rarely works. And the main reason it works is because it is all comes out of Damien's head. It's the creation of one man. And there's a through line in the whole movie, which is that what would happen if all of our filters were away and our id expressed itself with, with no encumbrance whatsoever, what would happen? And we get to see it in a variety of ways. There he is, the writer, director, Dominic. Whoa. Uh, in form of pixels, sharing this uh, conversation with you, with friends such as Julieta, Javier, and the magnificent Michael Barker. Thank you all for being there. Uh, Damien, we were just talking about, uh, you know, the through line of the movie about revenge and about the id. I just want to say one other thing is when Damien was nominated for the Oscar, 
there was an event for the five nominated directors, and Guillermo del Toro gave the most incredible speech about how to watch this film. And I, I, I wish, you know, it would be printed somewhere, uh, but it, it, it's really about how we connect with each story, and the first one's so much fun, but then it goes, and, and, and the different characters, and what's relatable, like the, the Bombito one, about how, you know, you've had that experience with the cable company, or the, the, you know, the telephone company. But then when it gets to the last story, uh, what Guillermo said, it becomes so profound, because, what that story, the wedding is about, is about you just get rid of all the bile and all the awfulness and every, every gar piece of garbage that's in you, and that's when love begins. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for me, that, that ending, uh, uh, in a way, uh, uh, is talking about that you, Aiden, and Eve, you know, civilization falls and true love rises. <laughs> only at the end, only after civilization falls. Yeah, we need to get rid of a lot of stuff in order to uh, uh, realize what we truly feel uh, about each other. How, can you tell us just how the idea for this movie began and which story was the first and how one led to another in creation? Yeah, the, the, uh, actually the order in the film is the exact order in which I wrote the stories. Uh, it's not that I wanted to keep the order, I, uh, uh, I mean, I, I just wrote them separately and by the third or the fourth I, I discovered that they were all linked, uh, connected uh, thematically and uh, energetically, so I knew that they belonged to the same album. They were like different songs, from the same uh, uh, rock concert, uh, uh, rock rock concept album, uh, and, and and that's how it uh, it happened. It, it was a non-voluntary project for me. I was trying to write other films, uh, regular feature films, and in the meantime, I was getting mad about some things. So uh, uh, as a release, I uh, I, I just uh, I mean. Each time I was getting uh, uh, crazy about something, I was in the middle of the road, for example. And I had this argument uh, with another driver who, who drives this big, Audi, expensive Audi. I was the one in the, in the old car. I was the poor one. <laughs> I had this argument, so this guy insults me and, and runs away and disappears. So that's when reality turns fiction, and I start thinking, what if, a few miles ahead, I found this guy again in the middle of the road, a flat tire? And what if, instead of me, there's a, this big guy, this muscle guy, driving his car and wants to take revenge? So I would stop in the middle of nowhere, in a 7-Eleven or something, just to write that story. So, while creating wild tales, in a way I felt like a, like a musician or a painter, uh, sometimes you envy them because as a script writer you have to live with the same universe and the same characters sometimes for months or even years. Uh, but they, you know, musicians, they just enter a bar and, and, and they watch, they, they, they look at a, an image, something that tells them something, and they have a glass of wine and they write a song, and that's it. Next day, other song. So I could do that in this film. Wow. Um, uh, did you um, did you actually attend a wedding like that? <laughs> I, I mean, I've been at weddings, no, no, no wedding like this one, but I've been at weddings <laughs> where everybody knew something that the bride didn't know or that the groom didn't know, and we were all there with a tuxedo, uh, celebrating something that was a lot. So I, I, I've been at some weddings. I am not going to tell which wedding. <laughs> we are still married. We are still married. But uh, uh, and then I, I meet in, in other weddings where uh, where uh, uh, you see uh, uh, some kind of uh, uh, violence in the way that people dance and behave. And I truly see. Uh, uh, I, I truly saw 
Uh, these guys taking uh, the groom clothes, all, all of the clothes, you know, in the middle of the wedding or the, the grandmother was there and everyone was, so yeah, I've seen some, some crazy stuff. But I've never been in a wedding like this one. You know, um... Now you get the, f you, you see who Damien is. This is such fresh energy, you know? Like, it's, we should all, keep, I wish you could put it in a bottle somewhere and save it for a special day. But I, I uh, uh, the way I met Damien was that uh, <laughs> uh, Pedro Almodovar and his brother Augustine Almodovar, years ago, uh, saw some of Damien's work and said, you know, this guy, he's the future, he's the future. And so they are uh, uh, two of the producers of the film, and you can certainly see why the Almodovar brothers were so enamored uh, with Damien's talent. And so I don't know if you want to comment about that relationship with the uh, Almodovar brothers uh, with this film. Yeah. No, no, they, they have been great, and, and actually they introduced me to you, and, and one of the first things uh, that they, they did uh, after they saw the first cut is we, have to, we need to show this to, to Michael and Tom, and, and, and we have these great distributors in the U.S., and, 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 and you are, you are this guy that's sitting there, he's a genius, he knows about movies, he, you, you don't have an idea, he's like an encyclopedia, he knows everything, he has this story that he was ill, uh, uh, during his childhood, I don't know, and he had this book of the Oscars, so he knows every single award and nomination from we were talking know, about 1961. We're talking about the Almodovars, come on. <laughs> um, all right, we're going to another subject. Yeah, Listen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, they are, they are uh, uh, fantastic. I, I, I truly admire Pedro and Pedro's work as a director and also El Deseo as a company, they produced the first. Uh, uh. Anyway, the Almodovar problem, uh, brothers have a real connection to Argentinian cinema. And um, uh, uh, you can see the energy in this film is something that they were really invigorated by and his talent. Well, I don't know. I guess we lost him for a moment. Um, until he comes back. Do we have a way to get him back? Well, I'm sure they'll try. Uh, maybe we should open up for some questions. He's got a mic. Soon. Um, it's playing in America right now, and it's doing very, very well. In fact, it's, it's way over $2 million already. So I think it's just another month that it comes out on home entertainment. I don't remember the exact date. I have a question all the way to your right. Hello? I like how the opening scene is like a diagram of what? how the whole movie is we going to work. We can't hear you. I like how the opening scene, the opening scene is like a diagram of how the movie is going to work. It's amazement piled on amazement, amusement piled on amusement, with revelations tumbling out of each other. Yeah, I mean the opening, the prologue is you feel like you're entering a kind of no man's land. You're in a whole other world that's a bit nasty and a bit funny and a bit otherworldly, but also relatable in a way. Yes. I mean, we have another question to your right. Hi. He's back. We're taking questions from uh, the audience, uh, Damian. Okay. I, I, I don't understand how anyone in their right mind would not vote for this movie as the best foreign film. Feature. <laughs> can, you, can you enlighten us why it didn't win? Well, listen, I'll tell you this. We were thrilled it was nominated because it's so rare in film history that comedies get nominated at all, and that's a real tribute to how much the movie is loved. Yeah, 
Yeah, I mean, uh, we are we uh, want by the nation, and uh, I promised myself that after the, uh, we've been nominated, I, I was not going to be uh, crazy or anxious about actually winning uh, our work. So, so uh, for us, all, all the ride was just fantastic, and, and you know, when you have five films from all of the world. And, and each of the countries sent one film from a um, hundred of films, and, uh, and and you are in no fight. I, I mean, anyone can win, and it's going to be fair. I mean, if we would have done, won, uh, probably some uh, a guy uh, would ask the same question that you just did to the director of uh, uh, Ida, Ida, and 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 I, and I think it would uh, uh, it's fair that you won, and and also would have. Been, uh, uh, fantastic to win, and, and the other films such as Leviathan and, and Timbuktu, they, I, I think they all deserve the, the award. What I don't understand is why do they give just one Oscar? <laughs> why can't they have one for each film? I, I don't understand that. You know, you know, it's also a rarity uh, that the Cannes Film Festival will put a comedy in competition. So this was a big breakthrough that this film was in competition in Cannes last year. Yeah, 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 absolutely. I mean, we, we, we started our journey uh, uh, being selected for the main competition at Cannes, and we ended our, our journey uh, being nominated for an Oscar. And, and in the middle, uh, uh, White Tales became the, the biggest film uh, ever in Argentinian history. So I, I truly believe that we cannot ask for more. And now we're there with you at the Roger Weaver Festival. That's, we're, that's, you know, Damien, Damien, we're actually ending the journey at the Virginia Theater in Champaign, Illinois. Oh, wow. You know. Um, that sounds uh, so good. Yeah. Damien, how many movies did you make before? And uh, this is, I think, your first movie that's released here in the U.S. Can you tell us a little bit about your background? Yeah, yeah. I did uh, four things before Wild Tales. I made uh, two TV series and two feature films. Uh, so, so uh, all of them were pretty successful in Argentina. The first TV series I, I made uh, was called uh, The Pretenders, Los Simuladores, and it was a huge hit here. Uh, so that opens a lot of doors for me, and, and since then I can do whatever I want to do and, and, and find a, a great producer such as Hugo Sigman, Matia Monteirin, and all the people from KNS that, that produced my, my previous film. Uh, which is called On Probation, Tiempo de Valientes, and now uh, White Tales. Uh, but this is the first film that I did, the first thing that I did that truly goes uh, international. Uh, and uh, I mean, the series were remade in different countries, in Mexico, uh, Spain, they made a pilot in, uh, in ABC, in the United States, and, 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 and many countries from Europe and Latin America and Russia as well. So, uh, uh, actually, the producer for, from Leviathan uh, produced a, a remake of a series that I made uh, in, in 2002. But this is the, the, the first uh, uh, project that, that, I, that I made that, that went uh, to all the world and, and it's been, it's been, it has been shown in so many countries and, and opened a huge amount of doors for me. I, I received uh, messages from people that I truly admire, and, and, uh, and so, so I, I const I'm constantly hearing, you know, Mel Brooks loved the film, and uh, Scorsese loves the film, and Woody Allen loves the film, so, so I am truly impressed. I, 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 I don't think I, I ever dreamed of something like what's going on with, with this film. Damien, I, uh, I want to ask a question about Javier. I, I mentioned before, I never noticed it before, you know the end of the film by uh, Javier's credit is the casting. Yeah, it's yeah. the very first credit. Can you comment on, the, on, on Javier and the casting of the film? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he's a, he's a friend. He was a, a production assistant, I, I believe, in, in On Probation, in the film that I made in 2005. That's how we met. And, and after he, he started, and, and he, he also went to a high school with, with some friends of mine, so we were kind of uh, uh, in touch. Uh, but then he started to work uh, uh, to specialize in casting area, 
and he works for this company uh, doing both uh, uh, productions work, production work. Uh, he's executive producer of some, some things that, and also he reads new stuff, knows about uh, 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 storytelling and, and script writing. He's a great reader. And also he knows a lot about theater and he goes to see almost every single uh, play that's being shown here in Buenos Aires. So he knows all the actors, the younger ones, the, the older ones, the, the, uh, uh, some people that are from, from the mainstream, uh, let's say, uh, area and also the independent area. So uh, he's a great uh, uh, guy in order to discuss uh, ideas for the casting of the film. Uh, and actually, he was there in the in the very first meetings, um, and, and we started started to think, and uh, and and then uh, uh, I mean I, I think that he deserved a, a great spot in the, the credits, and, and I had this, uh, actually he was going to be he, he was going to be an animal, you know, in the title sequence at the beginning, but then. <laughs> Some producers that I was not expecting to put them in the in the main credits, uh, uh, they have to be in the main credits, and uh, and and the music was already composed. So so I I, I said okay, I'm going to end the, the movie uh, putting uh, his title first. And actually, I think it, it's the best place to. I, I would love to put my name at the end of the film. It's but, true. Uh, it's true. How that's usually that's usually the directed by place, you know. I know, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> but uh, but you know, I also like the, uh, the 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 title sequence with the animal. It was important for me, so so uh, I, I think that that we finally f found the uh, the right place. And uh, no, no, he's been great. He's a friend. He's a friend, and 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 also a very talented uh, person. So I, I I suggest that you if you ever come to shoot to South America, you should uh, uh, yeah, contact Javier and ask him for, for actors. And, uh, and Javier, actors. Javier how, many, how many roles did you have to cast in this film? Oh, um, I guess there were about, I would say, something like 70. It's amazing. A lot of characters. <laughs> in total. We, of course, I work with a, a, a very good team, you know, that, because there is, a, you know, it's like, as you saw, it's six different movies, actually. It, if you think about it, it, maybe you cast that number of characters, I mean, for the kind of movies that we do in Argentina, in the, in the wedding you have more than you may have in a regular film. So we were, I worked with a, with a very good uh, team, you know, in the first period, designing and thinking who may be the leadings, then with another uh, casting house that took a lot of auditions. And then there was a, uh, um, a girl working with the extras, which are almost, you know, usually it's something that goes apart for, I mean, it was a luxury to have someone working specifically with the extras, but some of them were so good that you remember, because you know, the grandmother in the wedding, it's someone that has no line, but you remember that Jewish grandmother, you know, and she was part of the extras, and so many like that during the whole film. How about the older woman with you in your sequence? She's something. Ah, she's fantastic. Oh, yeah. Lita Cortese. Ah. Lita Cortese is her name. She can. Yes, she's a genius, a big actress. Uh, I love her. I, I didn't work before uh, with her before that, but I love to. Uh, she's wonderful, really, yeah. the best. And, and they will have. Actually, Lita Cortese is the first actress that we have. Uh, I envisioned a character uh, for, a, for a very skinny woman. I mean, when I wrote that story, I had in mind a very, very skinny woman with big eyes and yeah, and, 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 and then we were there in the middle of a meeting and, and, and I don't know who suggested Rita, and what about Rita, she's a close friend of one of our producers. And as soon as I saw Rita's face in that character, I, I thought, okay, that, that's that's perfect. 
and uh, and now she's fantastic. She's a singer also. She has a great voice. Uh, and, uh, and 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 she and Julieta have had a great time. In the in the extras of the TV and Blu-ray, we're going to put some some images of them uh, just laughing, uh, trying to memorize the, the checks. Uh, because yeah, they, they were uh, laughing a lot while shooting. Well, cut! <laughs> wow. Yeah. Do we have any other questions? I got a question yeah, right up front. Uh, hello. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say it's a magnificent film, and I'm very happy to see it getting its due attention in the United States and all around, uh, all around the world. And I have a bit of a delicate question, and I think a lot of people are sort of thinking about this. But obviously, in the opening scene, um, you know, about a month ago, there was the very tragic German Wings disaster, and I was kind of hoping you guys would shed some light on your reaction to that and sort of the mood among the distributors and the exhibitors and did it have any sort of effect on the way you were exhibiting it in Europe especially? Michael? I, you know... <laughs> a journalist once called me about this and it was like news to me, you know? I, um... The mic. Oh, a journalist called me about it a while ago, and I said it never dawned on me because the film is, it's a piece of fiction, you know? And um, it's like metaphor, it's, it's symbolic, it's, it's like watching a uh, Luis Bunuel film that maybe you make connections to the world, but it's really not the real world. Um, I don't know how else to answer that. Yeah, no, no, no. I mean, uh, uh, obviously we were all shocked and, and, and as soon as I uh, uh, read in the newspapers that the, the guy threw the plane uh, uh, and he meant to, 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 to throw it down, uh, uh, of course I could establish a relationship and, 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 and I thought, okay, people are going to think that this guy went to the theater and saw the film and thought of doing such a crazy thing after seeing, but uh, I, I don't think that happened. Uh, uh, I don't believe that, uh, of course, uh, uh, reality and fiction are, are mutually influenced all the time. I, I believe that science is in a way uh, influenced by uh, 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 writers uh, uh, such as uh, uh, Jules Verne and Edgar Allan Poe and, and, and Robert Louis Stevenson and, and also writers. We are inspired constantly by reality. So uh, uh, th th there is a ground of intersection between these two worlds. Uh, in that particular case, I mean, what happened is a, is a, is a terrible thing, it's a tragedy, and, 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 uh, and, and the film was being released uh, uh, by that time in, 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 in Europe, actually, in, in Germany, it, it was out in that particular moment. It, it opened in, in the UK, just two or three weeks after that, or, or, or even, yeah, perhaps the same week, I don't know. Um, so yeah, we were kind of anxious about it, but, but no, it's not that I have you a know, statement you, or, or something, yeah. You know, um, mm -hmm. when you see the, the third story, the one about road rage, we all have had road rage, but the execution of it, as I said earlier, it's like a Roadrunner cartoon, so it's, it's, you're not really thinking about real tragedy, but real tragedy does occur with road rage, you know? I, so, I, you know. Yeah, I don't no, know. no, no, and, and, the, uh, and the relationship between the film and things from reality uh, is constant because, I mean, uh, of course, I, I, I took a lot of elements from the uh, feelings that reality provokes me, provokes on me. So, uh, but here in Argentina, for example, the press, uh, during the, the the release of the film and and, and the, the several months that the film was in the theaters, they were constantly uh, naming the movie uh, in the newspapers for for police stories. You know, another wild tales: a man killed his neighbor with an axe. Uh, another wild tales. In uh, so so uh, yeah, the, the, but but this one, the, the story of the plane, of course, is uh, yeah, it, it's. 
Well, Dami, I'm really happy to hear the last story is fiction because my youngest daughter's getting married next week and I'm totally terrified. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the, the film director or the other one? The, my youngest daughter is uh, getting married. She's the film director? The, not the director, no. She's already oh, married. Yeah. Um, so we have time for one more question, or maybe two at the most. To your left. To your left. Hi, so can you talk a little bit about the music selection? Yeah. Um, well, uh, music is uh, uh, so important to me during the writing process. I, I, I write listening to music and, and, and I listen to music very loud. And, uh, and, and I think that from all of the arts, music is the most uh, sublime in a way. Music is like food. You don't need to understand it to enjoy it. You know, when you read a book, you, you, you need to know how to read. You need to know the, the meaning of the words, but music just enters and affects you in a very physical way, in a very straight way. It's like eating chocolate. You, you, you don't understand it, but you like it. And, and the music is, is just like that. So movies and movie making, uh, it's like a temple for all the arts. Every art ended on, movie, on, the, movie, on the movies. You know, uh, uh, poetry, theater, uh, of course, music, dance, plastic arts, uh, you name it, photography, painting. And, uh, and, and so, so I truly like the music in movies. You know, sometimes uh, new directors or there's a new wave of uh, 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 doing film. It, it's old by now, but they, they, they uh, uh, often they take the music away, they take the dialogue away. Uh, 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 they don't move the camera, so so I, I would say that I am in the opposite corner. Uh, uh, I, I truly like dialogue, I like music, and I, I and I, I like to use it in a very bold way. So uh, this, this selection, this uh, 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 there are some some songs from the movie Flashdance, actually the the CD that's playing in the in the Road Rage episode. That that's the CD from, from Flashdance. Giorgio Moroder, uh, he wrote a magnificent song that I, that I, 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 I had that in mind while writing. And, uh, and then the music that the, the character of Ricardo Darín, uh, the music that's playing while he is putting the bomb inside the car and, and, and accomplishing his revenge, that, that belongs to a very famous TV show in Argentina, which is it was about babies and baby care. It was uh, conducted by doctor, so so it's a very soft music, and and I, I like the the, uh, the yeah the, the the counterpoint with with what was going on in, in the screen, and and then the, the I have a original music by the great Gustavo Santolasha, uh, who won uh, two Academy Awards, but this is the first Argentinian film that he makes, and he's from Argentina. And, uh, and the wedding segment, I use uh, all pre-existing music, some Jewish music, uh, uh, okay. uh, yeah, to, to create, yeah. generate that, that, that climax. Yeah. yeah. Um, we have no we, more time for questions, <laughs> I've just been told. I'm very sorry. But thank you, Julieta. Thank you, Javier. Thank you so thank much. You. And Damien, you are a great artist, and we love you. We love you. Bye. <laughs> Thank you. See you.